So welcome to Strider Tree Gear. Today I'm talking about my setup. For those of you who are curious, uh, this is the stuff I use every day. It's my favorite gear. I built this up over the last number of years, changing pieces out, and this is what I'm most comfortable with, what I'm most happy with. Uh, so I wanna share that with you. And there will be links in the description for everything. If you purchase anything after clicking those links, uh, it goes to help support the channel. So we really appreciate your support. All right, let's check it out. All right, I wanna start with some PPE. So first off, I've got these ANSI A5 cut resistant gloves. These things have saved my hand so many times. You guys all familiar with the term silky bite? Uh, this stuff doesn't cut with a silky generally. If you just whack it or even with a light slash, uh, it will stop a silky. It's even stopped my decelerating blade where once or twice I made a cut and I let go and the still spinning blade has whacked my hand, it stopped that. Not to say that it will protect you from a chainsaw, cause it won't, but um, I trust these vigorously and I wear them always when I'm in the tree. They, uh, the rubber tends to wear out after a little bit, after oh, four or five days of pretty good use, but the cloth never tears, they don't get holes. I just throw them all in a box, put them in the washing machine, put them back in my truck for all the groundies to use if they want them. Uh, because they just don't wear out. They're fantastic gloves and for about 12 bucks a pop, well worth it. Now, this is uh, the all important brain bucket. I wear the Protos by Fanner helmet. This is the second one I've purchased and owned. My other one's still in great shape. I use it as a backup helmet. Got my logo right here done by yours truly, Jose at Edify & Co. Now, there's a few reasons why I went with this helmet specifically over all the other helmets on the market because it offers things that none of them do. As a climber, one of the most irritating things that I deal with in the tree is branches that get caught as I'm moving my head around. We've got these live oak trees like right over there and they have really dense branch structures and I'm going climbing all the way up, set a tying point and then I start cutting. I work my way down and around a lot of the time. And so when I'm pushing through, having stuff catch on my helmet is irritating. These helmets do a beautiful job of not having any snag points. The visor here is nice and smooth. The sides are nice and smooth. Once in a while, this little clip gets caught by something, but that's pretty unusual. The only thing I ever have trouble with is this piece that I've attached. It's this Cardo uh, Pack Talk Bold unit. And we'll talk about that in a second. But without that, there's nowhere for the earmuffs to get snagged. Most helmets have like a little connecting point right here that gets snagged. These ear earmuffs can tuck out of the way. Um, this one can just slide back out of the way if you need. They pop out and in real easy. And that can actually, you can adjust that too so it squeezes harder or lighter. They're just fantastic helmets. Uh, they're easy to put on, off and on. They've got replaceable parts. All of the, all the contact points, whether it's around the brow or around the ears, you can actually just buy new foam for that. They're really, really practical. In addition to the helmet, I have these comm units, these intercoms. Now these are designed for motorcycles. This is the Pack Talk Bold. I've used a lot of the Cena units. Uh, I had the 20Ss and the 10Ss, and I haven't tried the 30S, the most recent one. But uh, from my review, from my understanding about and videos I was watching online, the Pack Talk, the key advantage of the Pack Talk Bold over the Cena 30Ks, is that these have better noise canceling. When I'm uh, in a tree and I've got, say, the crane operators using the other side, he generally doesn't even hear my chainsaw. It'll cut out my chainsaw noise that I'm using right here at my chest height uh, while I'm making the cut. And I can still talk to the crane operator through this if it's situated properly, which is incredible. So I have it mounted here to the inside of the helmet and they're very directional. So you gotta make sure this little yellow arrow is pointed right at your face. Otherwise it won't pick you up very well. So I've got Pack talk intercoms, uh, all my other groundy helmets have them as well. Groundies can mute in or mute out, or I can mute everyone else out and mute them back in. You can listen to your, your phone, your music. I can take calls. And as soon as I hang up the call, it reconnects the intercom for everyone. They're a very well thought out solution for, for communication. And I, and I recommend them highly. I don't know anything else in the market at their price point that is even comparable. So that's the old helmet. So the gaffs I'm using right now when I'm doing removals are these. They're the Gecko carbon fibers. 
I've used the Gecko aluminums, not as much. I've used the Gecko steel ones. I actually have a pair of those as my backups. Uh, they're all comfortable. They all work well. These are just so much lighter. Uh, they've become my favorite. They're quite comfortable. I have really bony shins and I haven't had any issues yet with the pads. Of course, these are only six or eight months old and I can tell I'm starting to get a little bit of a wear point in here. So I'm gonna be addressing that with some extra padding here pretty soon. But I like these. This is my second pair of carbon geckos I have. Couldn't recommend them enough. They are fantastic. I have also used the Edelred Talons and at some point I'm gonna do a comparison review. The Edelreds are more comfortable for the shins, but I haven't found them to necessarily be preferable. I prefer the lighter weight under most circumstances. If I'm gonna be in them all day long, eight hours doing doing crane removals or big big pine trees, then I, I'd maybe go with the Edelreds because they're a little bit more cushy, but uh, these are my go-tos, I love them. Now, when it comes to ropes, there's right now there's two ropes that are my favorites. Uh, if I need a tie-dye splice, if I know I'm gonna use some hardware and try to retrieve it, or if I know I'm going to be that's probably the main thing is when I'm using retrievable hardware or double roping. This is my go-to. It's Samson Voyager. Um, and it's it's pretty thick. It swells up to about 13 millimeters as it gets broken in, gets a little bit fluffy. It's really strong. Uh, so it's, it's like almost a 9,000 pound rated rope because it's a little bigger than your standard. It's a little bit heavier, but I love that thick rope in hand when I'm using a moving rope system and I'm using my arms frequently to pull on the rope to move myself through the canopy. Um, it, it gives a little extra peace of mind too, knowing that I've just got a little bit of a thicker rope to deal with. And this one in particular is very soft and loose despite the strength. It knots really easily. Uh, it's been a great rope for me. Uh, if I'm not using that, ecstatic. Uh, this is a rope I picked up more recently as a primarily single rope device. I can't find it uh, tie-dye spliced. While I guess you can tie-dye splice it, much like the Adrenaline, uh, they've got a, they call it the, the splife, uh, the Teufelberger does it, but you have to send it off to someone specifically trained to do that. None of the suppliers that I'm aware of will send it to me. If you know of one, let me know, and I would love to, love to buy a rope. But as far as single rope goes, this is great. It's very soft, pliable, and not easy. I don't have any trouble using it, and yet it's no has very very little stretch. It's a very static kern mantle construction, um, and that makes it a pleasure to use single rope as a single rope technique. Rope. All right. Speaking of single rope technique, SRT. My preferred devices to use for ascending for rope access right now is the Rope Runner Pro. Love it. It's quick. It's midline attachable. Easy on off doesn't lose any parts, uh, I love it. And then we've got the CT foot ascender. It's got this little catch, which makes it infinitely better than the Petzl one, unless you also buy the catch separately. There are a few that are really comparable. I've used the Notch Jet Step. I prefer this one. You have to reach down to release it, but it's better than it coming out when you don't expect. And then I also have the CT Haas foot ascender with the little pulley at the bottom. Uh, I love it. I've been using this for gosh, three years now, and it functions just as well as the day I bought it. All right, so moving on to the harness. What I've got here is the Treffelberger Tree Motion Evo. It's got the dual bridges. It's, pretty, it's a very comfortable saddle. I've been using it for about the last year in replacement of my Monkey Beaver saddle, which is equally comfortable. I've got a video in, um, in the link could be in the description of me comparing this saddle with my Monkey Beaver. Both great saddles. This is the one I'm using right now. And I'm gonna work my way around to show you everything that I carry with me every day. So here we've got my lanyard. It's about a 14 foot lanyard. This is Tritec uh, rope, so it's cut resistant. It'll take a slash from a silky without even making a dent most of the time. I use the ISE triple snap. So this is a triple locking carabiner. We've got the one, one, two, and three. So that's ANSI approved. I've got a uh, fisherman's knot on there. And then we've got a Petzl Zeon for my primary lanyard adjuster. It's very comfortable, easy to use, and I can use this as a short double rope system if I need to. Now I've got obviously a little bit of extra slack here, uh, daisy chain and a little Rock Exotica carabiner connecting it so I can 
access this all pretty quickly, pull it out, boom, have all the slack I need, and then it goes away just as fast. Well, almost as fast. Now we've got the Rock Exotica transporter. I've got another one of these that hasn't made its way to this saddle yet. I love it. Easy in, easy out. And then if I'm doing a lot of monkey and I can lock it off so that a branch doesn't accidentally open it. Then we've got my Silky Sugio. Uh, I've used this one and I use the Silky, um, there's a different one that I've used. They're both really comparable, both great saws. I like this position. It's easy for me to access, one hand in, one hand out. Uh, it doesn't get in the way. I hardly notice it's there. It, occasionally ropes will get caught on it, but that's the most I can say. And then I usually carry an extra climb system. So this is just a full on double rope system. A lot of times I'll use my tail to get someplace in the tree uh, when my single rope's gonna have too steep of an angle. So I just keep a full climb system, DMM, um, hitch climber pulley, DMM Perfecto, or um, and then the, some, you know, whatever hitch cord I've got around. Got some extra hitch cord that I'll use for a variety of reasons. There's a lot of ways to use a hitch cord. I keep an extra one. I've got the ro uh, scrunch on a little um, soft shackle that I made out of some throw line. One of these pocket wedges that I use on occasion. It's just nice to have with me on a, in a pickle. I've had my bar pinched in a branch once or twice and this will save the day. A couple extra carabiners and the notch quickie. I use this for canopy anchors or uh, it's just a handy device. A lot of times I'll use it if I'm doing spar work to choke off my climb system without having to cross load a carabiner. I always carry at least one uh, big pear shaped carabiner. This one's not quite pear shaped, but it's a little bit wider. And I use this pretty frequently at when I'm rigging by myself or if I'm, an, I'll, I'll throw my rope over a union, sometimes the tail of my climber up, tied onto a little branch, throw a munter hitch on the big oval carabiner, clip it to myself or to something behind me. And then I'll cut the branch and lower it myself and the ground to land it. So when I'm short staff, I always have one of those on me. Now I've got another one of these little rock exotic accessory beaners. These excellent monkey beaver suspenders for when I've got a big saw, and that's it. That is my, my daily harness setup. So that's my setup. Uh, if you are interested in any of those pieces, the links will all be in the description. And thank you for joining me here at Strider Tree Gear. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's things you're interested in want to see. And hit the little bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Appreciate you guys' support. Catch you next time.